Welcome back to another episode of Champ Talk. I'm Patrick Torsel. Today's just going to be a quick talk um, in response to a question I received uh, from Chris via email. And Chris was asking uh, how to handle essentially um, chironomy and rhythm in the context of syllabic chant or unreciting tones like when you're doing psalm tones. Uh, because there's no, there's usually no ictus written in, there's, there's no uh, melody to follow for arsis and thesis, so what do you do, how do you handle that? We'll take a quick look at that today. Um, there's, in, in my opinion, there's really no hard and fast rules about this. I'm going to tell you what the Libra Uzawali says, and that those are essentially the, the um, solemn rules uh, for how to place the ictus in syllabic chant. Um, but then I'll give you a couple other ideas that I use. Um, I, I, this is an area where I really don't think we need to, to look at these as hard and fast rules. It's, it's another area where I think it's more important to find out what's, what's effective at getting your singers together uh, when they're singing syllabic chant rather than so much worrying about following hard and fast rules. But we'll take a look at a couple concepts. So uh, I put up two verses, the second and third verse of the Magnificat in the eight, simple 8G eight tone. The Liber will tell us, the, the very simple basic rule for this is you go to the last known ictus based on the earlier ictus placement rules which are uh, beginnings of nooms and notes of length, etc. Et, et so you go to the last known ictus and then count back by two and keep counting back by two and place your ictus. So that's actually a really simple way to do this. I'm not sure that I want to say it's the best way, but let's go ahead and look at it since that's what the Liber says to do. Okay, we have a note of length ending each section here, right? So we can put our ictus there and we'll count backwards by two beats, two syllables. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so in de o salutari meo, that's where our ictus lie. Uh, then we back up here again, we've got a dotted punctum, so a note of length, and then we count back by two. Two, one, two, one, two. One, two, so we're beginning on the offbeat on beat two. So, et exultavi spiritus meus in deo salutari meo. Okay, so that's just, that's just the ictus. Let's go ahead and develop that notion first before I talk about uh, kind of the other ideas we can look at. Now, one of the concerns is if you don't have a melody to follow, how do you figure out arsis and thesis, for example? Well, I would argue that you, you don't have a melody to follow so much, but you do still have phrasing, and that's really what, what the idea of arsis and the idea of thesis is really about. It's, you know, the arsis is about that, that impetus, that pushing forward, while the, the uh, thesis is really the relaxation, right, or the, the, the kind of drawing back, the falling off. So I think we do still have that, even in syllabic chant. And exaltavit spiritus meus. See how it builds up to, to spiritus meus and then it backs off. So I would say we could write in some phrasing for that, right? Exaltavit spiritus meus. Same thing on the end here. In Deo salutari meo. Right? So again, we have this notion that we, you know, we can kind of use uh, arsis, 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 thesis, thesis. Arsis, because we always start with an arsis, we always end on a thesis, right? So we could have arsis, arsis, in deo salu. I'd probably even do an arsis there. Tari meo. Okay? So with no real information on the page, we can figure that out fairly quickly and fairly simply. Uh, we would have. Et exultavi spiritus meo. In Deo salutari meo. Right? So that's, that's it. It's fairly, fairly simple. I'll do that one more time for you. Et exaltavit spiritus meus. In Deo salutari meo. Okay? So that's, uh, that's my phone ringing to the Windows XP song. So that's basically the, the, the super simplistic option number one from the Liber for what to do in syllabic chant. Okay, so the Liber kind of provides us with a second uh, option which they seem to actually prefer. Uh, they, I think they consider it more, more musical. Um, and what they say to do in that case is to uh, put your preference for the ictus first on the final syllables of words. 
and then on the word accent. And they caution you against placing the ictus on weak penultimate uh, syllables. For example, the word spiritus, the word accent is on spiritus. So we could certainly put the ictus on tus and spi, but they're saying be careful wherever this model leads, make sure that we're not accenting a weak penultimate syllable, right? So we'll do that for the first half of the third verse here. Um, so we'll start by favoring the final syllables of the words and see if this works. Okay, so now we have to go from what we know and interpret uh, or interpolate, I guess, maybe, uh, where to put the others. So we're okay at the end here. One, two, right? So one, two, yeah, that's okay as well. Okay, what do we have here? We're, we have to keep things in groups of two and three, right? So, <clears throat> one, two, one, two, three. I think we're going to go here because that's kind of the secondary word accent, umili tatem. The, this E of eat here, the I, would be kind of one of those weak syllables we want to avoid. So, uh, let's keep backing up here. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. Okay, so we could do it that way. And just like up above, we can, we can come up with a certain level of um, phrasing. So, quia respexi tu militate manchile So, this is kind of the same thing. I mean, these phrases, I mean, I'm keeping them really simple, but basically, we just, we've got the, the the build, and we've got the fault. So, arsis, arsis. This is not a word accent, it's a little less important. It's in the middle of the word. I might throw a thesis in there. Go back to an arsis over here. Uh, thesis, thesis. Okay, so we might have something like this. Um, we are respect militatem anchile sui. Right? Okay. Now the last method I kind of want to tell you about breaks all the rules. Um, kind of goes directly against some suggestions. But I found it useful in certain cases. And that is to essentially just use the word accent as your ictus. Now, the reason the Solem method doesn't like that is because it's a little choppier. It's a little more broken up. It's a little more... Uh, it's almost too strong. It's like you're hitting those accents a little bit too much if you're not careful. And if you follow the, the Solem rules, the idea is to make it just this really smooth, uh, flowing sound rather than having any of the accents really hit too hard. Uh, the problem with that is, well, I should first say that's beautiful and it works really well if you have a, say, a monastic choir that's doing this all the time or if your choir does this all the time. It's a lot harder if you are, let's say, uh, you, your choir helps you out singing Vespers once a month or, or something like that. Um, they're not doing this all the time, and so it's, it's difficult, unless they speak Latin fluently, uh, to really be able to, to, uh, to, just, to, to, do that, to do that method well and actually speak the words and sing the words. Whereas if you kind of follow the word accents, more or less, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Now, we're still going to end here on the ictus there but then let's just let's just follow the word accents and see what we get now we're going to have to fill some things in here so ecce enim ex hoc okay so we'll put one there we'll count back two uh, or three in this case ex hoc be atom medicent omnes generationes okay again we've got the same Notion of phrasing. Ecce enim ex hoc beata medicent. So we got arsis, 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 uh, thesis, arsis, on this gen. Uh, three, three arsis here. So there's almost a couple of little phrases in there, right? So we kind of have a little bit of that, a little bit of that, right? Okay. So if we look at the second half of this verse, according to my breaking all the rules rule, 
Ecce eni mex hoc beatum medicin tomnus generationes. Now you can hear when I sang that I kind of was hitting those accents uh, probably too hard, and that's what they want you to avoid. That's why they say not to do this. But what you're going to find is for people who don't sing Latin all the time, emphasizing the word accent makes it a lot easier to, to kind of keep going through the phrase. Ecce enim ex hoc beatum medicin tomnus generationes. As opposed to, you know, up above where we had um, et exaltavi spiritus meus in Deo salutari, uh, what is it, yeah, in Deo salutari meo. It's not that bad, especially for someone who speaks Latin, but I'm just throwing this out there as, as kind of one, uh, one more idea, one more way you might approach this with a group that's less familiar with it. So let's look at all three of those again. The, the simple rules from Solem would say, um, et exaltavit spiritus meus, in Deo salutari meo. Okay, the slightly more nuanced Solem might say, quia respectum militatem mancile sue. And then my kind of uh, hit the accents would go, Ecce eni mex hoc beata medicin tomis generationes. I'm in a spot without a lot of room. I hope you could see what, what my arms were doing more or less there. It was a little uncomfortable angle, but um, hopefully that helps clear that up a little bit. If you have any specific questions about that, uh, please feel free to ask. Um, and I will see you all in the next episode of Chant Talk. God bless.